And we're just getting set for the 2024 Alberta Junior B Provincials. I'm Sean Mullen, along with Chris Caldwell. And Chris, along with Dave Dawson, will be calling that tournament on hnlive.ca. Chris, a uh, very exciting time of year for someone like yourself who follows Junior B in Alberta so closely. Oh, very exciting time. Every year, look forward to this tournament and kind of wraps up uh, Alberta Junior Hockey uh, for the most part. Of course, the AJHL will still continue afterwards and Senior Hockey has their finals the weekend after. But this is the final weekend of uh, most of the provincials in Hockey Alberta. So always very exciting time to look forward to. And uh, the league you followed the closest and called the championship in was the one that took the longest to wrap up. The final team entering provincials in Peace River, the Okotoks Bisons. Uh, and it took until game six against a very game Sylvan Lake Wranglers club a much closer Heritage Junior Hockey League Championship Series this year. It was. I think uh, Okotoks may be kind of a victim of their own success. Is they, mm. I think they thought that they were going to be able to just kind of cruise into provincials similar to what they did last year and the year before, where they didn't, they weren't really challenged. And all season long, again, weren't really challenged. They got a little bit of a challenge from High River in Game 1, but... As head coach Brad Cobb said, pucks just didn't go their way. And then Oak Tokes dominated after that and gentlemanly swept the Flyers. And then against Rocky, it was a very one-sided affair. And I, I think Oak Tokes definitely was a victim of their own success. Went into the finals, got game one against Silver Lake and thought, okay, it'll be four quick games and we'll get a couple of weeks off before Provincials. And that wasn't the case. Silver Lake gave them everything they could handle and after the first four games of the series, I was looking at going, I don't know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, it was probably the most bizarre series I've called. And the fact that the home team had won the first four games and somebody's going to say, well, that's normal. But it was the way that they won it. They dominated it every game start to finish. And it wasn't, uh, oh, you had two games at home and then the other team had two at home. It was alternating games. So, And they were, games one and two were back-to-back. -back. Games three and four were back-to-back. But neither team could put together two consecutive solid games until this past weekend when Okotoks did in games five and six. And, and Grady Nicholas, I mean, I know he's not the only factor, but when your team is, is in a tight battle and having har a hard time taking a stranglehold on a series, that's when you need your goalie to step up. And, and boy, did he. You know, back-to-back -back shutouts against a Sylvan Lake team that didn't lack for offense is a pretty remarkable achievement. Oh, yeah, and I think uh, Grady kind of got uh, got the reset after game four, getting the hook after giving up the fifth goal against Sylvan Lake. And wasn't that great in the first four games of that series? Had an 880 save percentage in the first four games. Finishes that series with a 923 save percentage. Amazing what two shutouts back-to-back -back mm -hmm. will do for you. But uh, Grady Nicholas definitely struggled the first four games. And it was really, it was Okotoks' offense. It was outscoring Sylvan Lake, and we saw that depth. Games five and six, we saw Okotoks defensively. We saw them lying down in front of shots. Silver Lake, what was so successful for them in game four was the power play, three for five. They were 0 for 11 the last two games and had seven, shot, had seven shots in the first game on the power plays, had just five shots in game six on the power play. So they had 12 shots that made it through to Grady Nicholas. They probably had about 35 chances that they took shots towards the net, but they were blocked or hit traffic, didn't make it through. So Okotoks, full credit to them after the first four games, really changed up the dynamic and changed up what they wanted to do and had more defensive style games, something that was so successful for them in the regular season. I should mention, by the way, stay with us on this preview of the Alberta Junior B Provincials. We're going to hear from Adam Huxley, uh, head coach of the defending champion Wainwright Bisons, who are back in again. But as for the Okotoks Bisons, Chris, I have to ask, we saw Wainwright, who were the host teams uh, team a couple of years ago, but fell out uh, just a little bit short in their host season, come back and win in Okotoks. How hungry do you think the Okotoks Bisons are after being the host team last year, getting to the final and losing to repeat what Wainwright did, get to provincials and win it in someone else's building? I think they're going to be very hungry, but uh, going up a lot against a lot of unknown teams this year. Mm -hmm. Last year at Provincials, the only new team to that uh, group was Sylvan Lake. Everybody else was a repeat from the year before other than the Sylvan Lake Wranglers. 
Whereas this year, the only two repeats are Wainwright and Okotoks. St. Albert, uh, first time in four years in there. Northwest Stamps, for the first time in eight years are into provincials. Lacreed is a second year team is into provincials. And then you got the North Peace Navigators who were the last team to kind of go what Okotoks is hoping to do. And that is three consecutive years going kind of reverse order all the way to the top of the podium. And the new teams coming in, it makes it really exciting, makes it really interesting. You know, a complete different feel to the tournament uh, with the Bison teams, of course, being uh, the, the holdovers. But does it make it, in your mind, a little more unpredictable? Yes and no. Um, I think it makes it a little more unpredictable for Okotoks and Wainwright mm. in the fact that, okay, they know each other. And unless these four teams have been living under a rock, they know what Okotoks and Wainwright are going to bring. And we'll hear from head coach Adam Huxley later on, you know, what Wainwright's going to bring. And, you know, Okotoks brings a very puck possession mentality. But you look at the other three teams and – St. Albert was the best team in the Capital League all year. They were a couple points ahead of uh, Short Park. Didn't have to go through the uh, the Knights this year, but uh, did have to go through a very tough Beaumont team. Northwest Stamps, uh, I wonder about them. They're the ones I think that could be the most interesting is, was their championship city championships as they finally got over that hump. They beat the CBHA Rangers after losing to them in back-to-back years. Um, the Northwest, interesting with LaCrete. Very excited to see them. LaCrete got off to such a hot start on the season, you know, seven and one to start the year, and then ended up second in the league only because they got Fort St. John. And that is Fort St. John every year seems to start off eh, one and three, one and four, one and five, and then don't lose the rest of the season. And then usually don't lose in the playoffs either. And uh, LaCrete. Stop that uh, this year in very dominant fashion and very impressive was LaCrete going into Fort St. John as that series was 3-3-1 and LaCrete started as the road team, goes into Fort St. John, wins all three games. Talk Wild. about stunner. <laughs> like, I don't think anybody saw that coming. Maybe, you know, being down 2-1 to one or being up 2-1 to one after the first three games, but going in and winning all three games and fairly handily winning all three games. They led most of the way in those first three games of the series and Fort St. John got one, but then LaCrete said, okay, enough's enough. We <laughs> toyed with you for one game. Now we're just going to shut you down and getting that shutout in game five to win that series four one LaCrete. I I'm going to make a bold prediction here and say, I can see it being LaCrete and Wainwright in the finals. Wow. Big prediction from Chris Colwell. And how fascinating is it? of course, that we have to wait until the very last game of the round robin for the rematch of last year's championship between Okotoks and Wainwright. And a spot in the championship could end up being on the line. I mean, that would be the way it would be set up, right? Storyline-wise, um, the drama would be that it would come down to that Bisons versus Bisons final round robin game to decide who's going to be in the championship. Oh, it'd be absolute drama. And it was the same as it was last year in Okotoks. We knew uh, that last round robin game was Okotoks and Wainwright. Already knew that Okotoks was in no matter what happened. All the Bisons had to do actually for Wainwright, and we're going to hear from Adam Huxley later, is Wainwright had to win that game or they were out. I mean, this was how close it was two through five. It, it was Okotoks and then everybody else was clumped in the middle. And Wainwright, if they lose in regulation... If my memory serves me correctly, I don't even think they had to, they got a chance to play for bronze. I think they would have finished fifth. But instead, they get to overtime, which then moves them into a guaranteed playing for a medal and playing for bronze. A win got them into the championship game, and that's exactly what they did. They got a goal early in overtime to get to that championship game, and the rematch was uh, just as high energy and high pace as the round robin game was. Well, it's been a quite a journey for Wainwright to get here. Uh, down 2 nothing in their championship final in their league. And it's a great story and a team with very consistent success that comes in as defending champs. Yeah, Wainwright uh, fell behind 2 nothing to Vermillion. They were down also 2-1 to one to Lloyd Minster the round before. So, you know, from afar, it looked like this may be the year that Wainwright doesn't get back and that they lose their crown of the Northeast League. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, Light switch clicked on. It was kind of like watching 
Gretzky and Messier and the Oilers in the late 80s, early 90s of, oh, we're down 4-1. I guess we should play now. Let's uh, go out and win the game 7-4. Don't wake that sleeping giant. Don't poke the bear. We're joined now by Adam Huxley of the defending provincial champion Wainwright Bisons. Congrats on another league championship. And uh, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, I don't know. A little tired right now. I, I, it was a lot different road this year. I mean, um, we definitely have the squad. Uh, just uh, we we made a couple things harder on ourselves than we needed to. Um, you know, people didn't really believe in us, but we believe in ourselves, and uh, we're down in both series um, coming in. Um, and you know, pretty humble, so I don't really look ahead. But those teams seem to think that they they had us, um, but. I knew deep down uh, we'll get the guys to do what they need to do. We'll talk a little bit. You said you were down in both series. Really, that final one uh, against uh, Vegreville down 2 nothing. They hadn't lost yet in the playoffs Perfect. before you guys finally handed them a, a loss. And you never looked back. How key was that triple overtime win in game three? Yeah, it was Vermillion. Veg was the first. Vermillion, yes. <laughs> um, you know, triple overtime. I mean – uh, the shots were 23 to five going into the second half uh, of the game. Um, very two minutes left. Uh, puck went off our captain's foot to their guy. They kept it in, scored on the power play. So now it's three, one. We were completely dominant. We came out the second or third period. We're dominating the start of that period. And then they scored one. And you know how that works when it rains, it pours. Um, and then they got another one. And then we went into overtime um, I'd say I had the first overtime and a half, we were on them and then they came back and they had their chances. And then finally, obviously the hockey gods, uh, probably did the right thing for once. And, and we got a, we got a break in overtime. Um, but you know, I've been around this long enough, even if we were down three and oh, I believe until I don't, until I, you're alive, till you're dead. And that's what I think. Um, that being said though, uh, they they were they were great and and you know I think they made that final push in that three overtime game. Um, they shortened the bench fairly early and some stuff like that. And uh, you know it may have cost them later on, but they we also woke up. I mean just you know look at the scoring output and stuff. Finally came uh, the first two games we just weren't ready. Just assumed assumed to be honest. Lloyd Lloyd was a hell of a squad too. I would say. Physically, that Vermilion series was harder. Uh, mentally and defending-wise, I would say Lloyd was. They have a really, really good top line. Um, and as soon as they get the puck, if you puck watch it all, they're going on a breakaway or whatever. They, they cheat a lot. They, and we just realized that we got to win some battles and stuff. And if you do that stuff against teams that are blowing the zone and stuff, you're going to get uh, the offense. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, if they score, you know, both series, to be honest, had a chance because we in the game two of uh, the Lloyd series, we could have been down two nothing, and then we lost game three. Um, but I, I, I believe in these guys. Uh, I believe in the roster we built. Um, I think the, the team that was supposed to win win. I'm not going to say that during the series, but uh, you know, and, and they gave us a lot of bulletin board material. I mean, you know, Lloyd. I think some kid after game three told us to plan our year end party for Saturday night, um, which was like two nights later. And then uh, in, in Vermilion, when they won two, you would have thought they won the Stanley Cup a little bit, some of their players. I know their coaches probably didn't think like that. But, you know, that just – me even just as a coach, it makes you want to work that much harder because you want to – you're like, oh, really? Um, and I think it just kind of woke our players up. Do you think, too, because you have guys, you know, yourself included as the coach, that have been there before – that maybe you guys don't get as high and as low as some teams that haven't had that experience might? For sure. I mean, I asked, you know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I questioned some of our, our team. After, I mean, how do you start those series? Like, you're in the final. You got you weren't going to have home ice if St. Paul won, um, whatever. And now you got home ice. Like, how don't you show up to play the game one and two of your hardest? We just didn't do all the little things. And, and I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. And, Losers complain about refs, but uh, I don't think, it, you know, the bounces that way or puck luck even went our way those first two games. But we didn't create it with hard work and, and details and stops, starts and doing all the little things. So uh, we didn't really deserve it anyway. But I, I, I questioned our team a little bit. I mean, you know, but that being said, I, I looked in one of the leader's faces and I said, we have the team. I think we have. 
And he said, quote unquote, bleep the F word out, rights we do. And so I knew the belief was still there. I, I did, to be honest, in, in this last series, I did something I don't really want to say on here. Um, it's nothing like crazy, but I, I, there, there was uh, the post game speech after game two. Um, was it was it'll, I'll have to say after I'm retired. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that sounds like something for a book. Yeah, no, it was. I don't even know how. I, well, I kind of had it in the back of my mind, but I'll let the players tell you. You can ask them during the thing. But seeing that adversity, I, I mean, that's what you guys had to face last year, provincials as well. So that kind of adversity could help you guys out for a possible defending championship here at provincials as well. Uh, you know what? Um, last year, uh, we had we had a harder road going in, and we had to beat a big, good, good goalie and kill them. And then St. Paul was a really good team, and uh, and we had to beat them. And uh, I think the adversity helped us. I, I truly believe that our identity has been forged through the, the these two hard series. I know what what our team is capable of, and I mean it's funny people are like, dude, how do you go from losing two one or two goal games to pumping a team by ten or eleven? And I said that's the team we have if we want to play. So, I mean, we have the staff, we have the we have the guys that can fill in that. We have we have a little bit of everything for sure, but so do these other teams. I huge Okotoks fan. Um, funny story, when we were playing the Saturday game, some kid that Brown went by our bench and started swinging a golf club after they scored the fourth goal. Like, where season's done. And man, did that backfire on him. So, <laughs> I think that, that, that I think Austin Klein went by their bench after we scored the empty net and did the same thing. He got, got a penalty. But anyway, I told him, what are you doing? But anyway, all I'm saying is, you know, there's a reason the NHL, they don't give you poster you know, bulletin board material, they call it, right? So I, I in this league, though, apparently it's very evident. No doubt. And all that said, because this tournament is so short and, and you've, you know, you've talked about not having your game the way you want in the first two games of those series, um, how important is it to find that consistency in this tournament? Because you don't have a lot of room for error here. You know, and that is the one thing, uh, my guys need to realize that these aren't, this is no longer a seven game series. Yes, it is a war. Like last year, we couldn't just give up. I mean, we ended up gutting her out, got a little help, got in, but uh, we can't, uh, we can't be like, ah, if we lose the first one, we got the next one. That, that which is our motto this playoffs, apparently. Uh, we need to come right out of the gate. And that's been their message the last week here is like, doesn't matter. Every team's unreal here. You do not nap. You can't let a team have a three goal lead and try and chase. You can't, you can't lose that first game. You can't do anything. You got to go come to the rink ready to go from the second the puck drops. Cause if you're not, you're, you know, just with the format, there's no semis and stuff like that. It's, you know, you're at home. You're not even playing on Sunday. If you have a couple, couple uh, lapses. We talked about, uh, kind of the resilience of your team last year and this year just yourself and the Oak Tokes Bison's the only returning teams to provincials four new teams to kind of look at and that I mean nobody knows each other really uh last year pretty much everybody knew each other everybody was in from the year before I think minus Sylvan Lake so how much diff- how much does that uh, I guess kind of um change the coaching strategy for you at all I've watched all these teams I'm sure these coaches have watched us whatever if they find video of it um, uh, we, we do a lot of preparation and stuff. We will know who we're playing, but that you're right. Like, you don't, the, a lot of these kids have never played in this, uh, at this, uh, juncture, but you know, we got guys that played in the dub for two or three years and should still be there and chose not to be there for one reason or the other. Um, we, you know, these kids have all played a high level of hockey that we have on our team anyway. Um, I don't think there should be any surprises. I think the big thing is just mentally focusing to, to bring our game, our identity right off the start and try and carry it for the tournament. You've mentioned identity a couple of times now, uh, you know, for fans that are of those teams that haven't seen uh, Wayne Wright before or not recently, how would you describe that identity and what you're bringing to this tournament? <sighs> well, then we, have, we actually have a, uh, we're kind of bipolar. 
<laughs> as you can tell by the score. Uh, you know, our if I was to give our identity, it would be we'll go where the game takes us. Let's just say that. We'll go where the game takes us. I would love to be like, hey, we do this, this, and this. You better watch out for this, this, and this. But it's like, that all depends on what's what, you know? <laughs> well, being able to adjust to the game that you're you're facing and dealing with the kind of, you know, the cards that you're dealt is not a bad thing either. To be yeah. flexible and to have a variety of, of approaches. Yeah, no. Uh, we, you know, we, we got a fairly big team. We're physical. Um, we, we pressure pretty hard. Uh, we back check fairly hard. Well, it'll depend on the night. Um, uh, our D are very mobile. Um, you know, special teams. Uh, to be honest, wasn't great during this playoffs, but um, we got a lot of looks and stuff. But that's that is actually been a big thing of ours this year. Um, but you know, we got a little bit of everything. Um, again, I, if we play the way I think we should play every night and and, and play consistent in whatever we're doing, <laughs> we should be fine. We'll, we'll we'll give everyone a run anyway. You talked about the specialty teams. Uh, you guys had 90 power plays in your playoff this year, um, almost dwarfing everybody else at provincials. How much did that, I guess, help you? Will that help you guys going into provincials? Yeah. You know, knowing I, that you got, got a lot of work on power play. A, You know what's crazy? We probably had 150 against. Um, you, you know what it's like. It's not like, it's not like a boxing fight where it's like, you know, it goes to the judges and, and you got to beat the champ outright. It's it's for us. We fight a lot of other entities. Um, I feel like you know. I mean, we've won seven years in a row. People around here don't want us winning. So and they they don't give us freebies, and we don't want them, right? Like, but I felt like you know a lot of nights there's a different standard, and for us and them, but that that's okay. Like again, losers complain about the rest. The refs are around here are all amazing people. It's it's all good. We've had lots of success and lots of whatever, but. Um, but the big thing is um, we're, we're pretty disciplined, but uh, we had a lot of penalties um, that we had to kill. And that was actually a huge part of our identity. Our penalty kill was awesome. So when you talk about that, that success and the consistent, you know, return trips to the provincials, having been through this dance before and you know, having been to the final and won, having been to the final and lost, what, what are the lessons that you're teaching your players, because not all of them are returning, obviously, that are experiencing yeah, this for the first time. I shouldn't even, I shouldn't even said one word about the refs because that, that doesn't mean anything because we're now going to the best of the best. We're going to get the best guys that they think are in the province. So it's awesome. And uh, some of those guys happen to be from our league, some will not, whatever. Um, but, yeah, we're, we get them from our province. So that's cool. Um, but, like, you know, at the end of the day, my message to our guys is worry about who's in the room you know, worry about your job and literally you have to take it shift by shift. I mean, look at, look at that Okotoks game last year. You know, we were actually going golfing when that kid wasn't wrong until he did that. And, uh, you know, so you got to worry about you. You can't, you can't worry about what the rest, you can't worry about what the people, uh, you know, on the other team are doing and the other coaches, you can't worry about anything. You got to worry about what we need to do as a group. Is there a little bit of uh, extra pressure for you guys being the defending champions this year? Because everybody's going to be hunting for oh, you again. We're we're going in with an underdog mentality. We're always the underdogs. We weren't supposed to win last year. Uh, many years we've been looked at as not the team to win. So, um, and you know what? One year we probably outplayed Airdrie that year, and one mistake, two, two mistakes, or in our season was done, right? in overtime or else we would have went three in a row um that was a hell of a squad too that we had um but yeah i mean it's just uh that's that's how close you get when you get into there but yeah we're the underdogs there's teams that are way better than us <laughs> when you look at your roster you know there's a couple guys at the top uh goal scoring wise but you've got 12 guys i think with 20 points or more that are kind of hovering around that you know near point of game mark how much is depth your calling card uh yeah. rather yeah, I mean, than so in my league, I've won coach of the year one time. Um, I had, a, I won, we lost one game all season one year. I didn't win it. Um, our score, we've had the leading score once or twice, maybe. And that, that they had to give it to him. Uh, uh, this one kid that played, I don't know if you guys remember Chandler Klein. He should have been the best player in the province playing. He shouldn't have no business playing junior B. I think he won MVP one year. 
Um, we don't, we don't win, we, we don't win personal awards. Um, but our players don't give two flying F's about personal awards. Um, these kids would much rather win the, the big one. Right. So, um, they, they are fully invested in that. I mean, they're, there's kids in this league with like 80 points or whatever it is. And we go play Vegreville, for example, God bless their souls. They're such a good group of the, the people that run it and stuff. They're not a great team. You know, no, very rarely or is anyone on our team going and collecting eight points or something in a 12 2 game. It's pretty spread out because our guys would rather go collect eight points against St. Paul. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> if they're going to do that. So uh, that's how it always has been. Um, that's how we coach you, uh, whatever. And and I honestly, if you went through our locker room, none of those kids could carry less. I don't, I have not once in my time here had a player come and say, Hawks, can you go talk to the ref about a point or whatever? I've had goalies try to get stuff <laughs> fixed because they, they're goalies. But I've, I've never had a player, and I've had players that get screwed out a lot of points in a scoring race. And I've not once heard them because they don't care about that. Well, we, we really appreciate you taking the time to chat today, and we know it's going to be another great tournament. It is every year. Four new teams. The defending champs are back. So, uh, you know, good luck. The and, defending uh, underdogs. The defending underdogs. Well, good <laughs> good luck. We appreciate your time, and we look forward to the tournament. Yeah, no, I look forward. You guys do an awesome job, and, uh, you know, I told all the parents that aren't coming, make sure they tune in. Well, there you have it. Adam Huxley joining us, and we appreciate uh, his time and – Boy, if anyone knows this tournament and understands what it's going to take to have success here, it's him uh, with the success every year that that program has had. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, I know Hawks is saying that uh, they're going as the underdogs, but how can you not go in as the team that everybody's going to be hunting when you're the defending champions? I know you want that underdog mentality, but eh, that's <laughs> really not going to be the case. I don't think anybody else in provincials is going to look at Wainwright as the underdogs this year, they're going to be looking at this is the team we have to go through to win a provincial title. I think fair to say though, Chris, do not taunt Wainwright. No, <laughs> no don't taunt them. No, don't taunt do them. not taunt them. <laughs> learn the lesson of history. Scott it's Brown, did you learn your up. lesson? <laughs> yeah. Lord Minster, did you learn your lesson? And uh, Vermillion, did you learn your lesson? <laughs> right. It, it doesn't work. Don't tug on Superman's cape. Don't poke the bear. And we'll see what happens in this tournament, but it, there's uh, going to be a lot, to, a lot of excitement coming in the next few days. So we do want to mention as well, and uh, this is something that we know uh, Dave Dawson will be talking a lot about during the event. Uh, it's also Peace River, the home uh, of Darcy Hogan, and he had a lot of success there as a coach before, of course, tragically passing away in the uh, Humboldt bus crash. And there's a statue erected for him in front of the arena there, and uh, a lot of people, I'm sure, will be thinking of him throughout this event. Definitely will be as it's uh, now kind of uh, a full circle for uh, everything that has happened with the uh, North Peace Navigators and the Horgan and the Horgan family. And uh, you know what? Uh, every year that always is in the memory banks. No doubt about it. He'll be he and his family will uh, be in all of our minds as this tournament carries on. But we can't wait. One of the best events on our calendar every year, the Alberta Junior B Provincials getting started on hnlive.ca. Chris Colwell, Dave Dawson, and our whole crew will carry you through.